Hi, this is Delilah with Art by Delilah, and today I'm going to do a, a mini painting. This is a, a four by four square on a small canvas. So I'm going to first just kind of trace it out here, what I want to do. Oops, and there she goes. I'm trying to hold it in place with some clothespins so it's up a little higher because it's so tiny so you can see it. But I guess I better hold on to him while I'm painting him. Little minis can be fun to do. But you just have to get used to painting so small. I started out doing ACOs, the little two and a half by three and a half paintings um, in watercolors. I do a few in oil. When you get small, to me, oils are very difficult to do, but there are miniatures, you know, people that do miniatures all the time and um, really enjoy doing it. And they're, they're beautiful. There's a mini um, miniature show that they usually exhibit in um, Florida every year and people from all over the world exhibit in it and the, the paintings are phenomenal just phenomenal such tiny things but I'm not trying to do that detailed of a painting with the magnifying glass and things I just like to get in there and develop something so today I'm just doing this little bird on a branch with probably a couple of flowers in the background. Yeah, you say, quit talking, get started. All right. Like I said, I just established color in the background and then I'll go back and um, work on it a little more. But for right now, this is all I want. Put a lot of green foliage probably there in the back. I mix some um, walnut oil in with my oil paints as my medium and um, also mineral spirits. Okay, we got some sort of a background established there. Now I'm going to do the tree limbs, little branches that the guy's sitting on. I'm going to use some transparent red oxide to, to start that with. Kind of. Just scuffling it in there a bit. Every artist has their favorite colors. Kind of becomes their signature. Also, they have their favorite brands. And kind of comes with trial and error. You um, try a few different things, say, hey, that's not too bad. I kind of like the way that oil paint flows, or I like the, the way it blends and the colors it gives me. And then you might try a few more of that brand. Well, that might be the only one that you ever find that you like in that brand. And that can happen. Now with your blue paints, like I'm using quite a bit of blue here, which I'm going to add some more to. Blues are quite expensive. But on the other side, they have extreme tinting power. So, you know, when you put a little blue into something, it goes a long way. 
and you don't need much on your palette. I always end up putting a little too much in my palette and I waste it. It gets dry and hard and then I can't use it for anything. I don't think there's any, much magic with brushes. You just decide what kind of brush you like and that's what you use. However, the quality of paint and the quality of canvas can make big differences in how your work is going to turn out. So things to think about, to experiment with, you know, just buy a few of a certain kind and, and see. See if you like the way that paint flows. <clears throat> and if you do, well, then you're lucky. You got it. You found it right away. You found the magic one that, that, that you like. I'm going to start working on a couple of the little flowers I'm going to put in here in just a second. Don't have this branch contoured the way I want it to be. Got the little leaves there. Now we're going to start on the bird. I'm going to have a lot of color through here and I might even, no he's too little, I don't think I'll add any more flowers than that, but I'm going to keep the bird kind of brownie color, um, more subdued. And I'm doing that because of the other colors. I want I don't want too much color, but I want some. So saying that, I've got to figure out here. Trying to mix up kind of a brown, taking some orange and purple and smushing it around, trying to get the shade of brown I want. Still not there. I would say learning to mix your own colors is a very important part of really getting good at watercolors. Watercolors, I mean oil painting. I do do a lot in watercolor, but not today. Now you see that nice brown I've got there? I made that with purple and orange. I usually use a pretty limited palette and try to figure it out here as I'm going. I want to clean up some of those edges but I'll wait and do it later. When I say edges, I mean like around here and stuff where the canvas is showing. Normally, I take and um, tone my canvas. So if you have something that's showing there, it isn't such a deterrent. But sometimes when you're doing these little bitty ones, I don't. And also, you know, when I'm doing a demo, I think maybe it shows up just a little better if I don't have um, the colored background. I know it's really hard sometimes to see 
I haven't got all this video thing down yet. They didn't teach it when I went to college, so hey, what can I say? I thought about going to the over to the college and taking a class in video editing and stuff. What I really like to learn is how to set up two cameras so I could do a split screen and show my palette and what's going on over there and also what I'm doing here. But right now I don't have that skill set. Getting his little beak in there. Highlight kind of down the center. Ah, uh, gotta figure out his eyes. I think I want them to be black. <laughs> work on that. No, want to put his little feet down. on the branch so he doesn't fall off. Can't have a bird falling off the branch. That would be a tragedy. Have to call in the paramedics and get him fixed up. there kind of around okay, gotta do something with that buggy eyed bird there it's got I always like to give him a little character <laughs> now do about cleaning up around the bird a little. I don't want to have a, a line that goes like around it. So I'll do some cleanup and then I'll come back. Oopsie. And fix it a little more. get some darker greens in those leaves. Oh, my phthalo green is off my palette right now, so I have to mix some darker greens. Usually load up with all the colors I like before I start doing something like this, but today I didn't. A little short on a few of the colors. I always tend to have more colors on my palette than I need. I think a lot of artists do that. It's one of our hang-ups. We want them all, all those beautiful colors like, oh man, just one more of those, or how many blues can I get on my palette? Whoops, he fell again. Another way to keep these while you're painting them is either lay them down flat, or you can also take and put some tape on the back and, and tape them to the area that you're painting from. Either one of those things work fairly well. And I've done both. I usually don't lie them flat. The only thing I paint flat are my watercolors. Everything else, I'm on an easel working and stuff. And that's just a per personal preference. You can paint flat. I just have a better perspective for myself if I'm working on I can step back when I'm working on the easel and 
kind of figure out some things there that I might not see otherwise. Now, time to deal with that little pink flower up there. Oh, I called him pink and you didn't even know he was going to be pink. Okay, he's going to be a pink flower. <laughs> That's why I put some of the pink little places in the background. I'm gonna hit with some Indian yellow into that pink. I love Indian yellow, nice transparent color. If you've never used it, give it a try. You might like it. Okay, I'm going to give him just a tiny little highlight in his eyes. A little highlight there in each eye. And maybe on the beak. Alright. Adding some interest to the painting here with a few more little colors and things. Because this painting is so small, I don't sign the front. I only sign the back. I will show you the back here. Knocked it off enough times. <laughs> And you can put your name and, and things. A little four by four. <laughs> um, it's by Creative Mark. So, fun little thing to try. Make great gifts. So, this is Delilah with Art by Delilah. And thank you for watching.